Hello, my name is Cyclones Oz and we are tracking the Queensland cyclone situation again this morning. Uh, we've got a tropical low 05U located south of the Solomon Islands and this cyclone or tropical low right now is expected to become very strong as it approaches the Queensland coast. And we're talking category three, category four status and where it could impact in about seven to nine days time, anywhere between Cardwell down towards about Rockhampton. Um, that entire stretch of coastline is on watch to receive a severe tropical cyclone landfall. So I'm gonna be getting through all of that plus more in today's forecast update. If you are brand new to the channel, please you can consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. And if you recognize the voice from Force 13 AU, that channel there where I've been producing videos, hello again, welcome. This is my personal channel. So please do consider subscribing because it does help me out. But we are taking a look at the system right now. If we take a look at the satellite imagery, you can get a good idea of how it is developing. You can see on the infrared satellite imagery, a lot of very good thunderstorms are firing south of the Solomon Islands around the center of the low pressure system right now, which I believe is located about here, south of the city of Saman, um, which is on the extreme south of Papua New Guinea. Uh, you can see quite a lot of thunderstorm activity firing around the center of the system and it's looking really quite decent for a tropical low it's it's looking quite good there's a lot of thunderstorms a good circulation down towards the south you can see here on the lower level clouds some good circulation streaming into the system on the southern side there's also some rotation on the northern side where the strongest winds are they're about 30 knots right now actually on the northern side so it's a good looking system in terms of satellite imagery and how it's performing on uh, the satellite bands that we have so it's definitely developing and it's developing quite nicely and if anything it's developing with a little bit more speed than I initially thought, which is a concerning factor considering that this cyclone still got seven or eight days over some very good conditions across the Coral Sea before it inevitably crosses the coast on Queensland, which is what we'll get into now with the forecast, whereabouts it's gonna uh, cross the coast and what impacts are expected. But you can see if I'm to play this model run through this, you seem to be a forecast right now. So a major global model, taking a look at this and a reliable model. The cyclone or tropical low refuses to develop into a tropical cyclone until about Sunday, Monday-ish actually. In fact, it's well into Monday when it looks like it attains cyclone status. Yeah, about Monday noon. And this is when it's gonna pick up the name of Cyclone Curly, which is the next name on the Australian naming list. Um, and then after that, we're looking out for Cyclone Lincoln. But this one is most likely to become Kiralee. And there'll be two consecutive tropical cyclones moving towards the Queensland coastline and two major impacts expected as well in consecutive months. So you can see as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday, this cyclone undergoes rapid intensification around the Coral Sea and the Great Barrier Reef before it kind of stalls actually on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. That's a little bit of an interesting factor there. Now, if it stalls over the right conditions for a day, it's gonna be able to make the absolute most of 30 degrees Celsius sea surface temperatures. The only thing that's concerning me um, slightly is the fact that the ocean heat content is sky high for this system. It's really good for this system, but I don't don't think it's going to be able to sustain a stalling powerful tropical cyclone for 24 hours so it might actually the stall that the cyclone is going to do it might actually knock a category of intensity off this tropical cyclone um, on Wednesday but then it looks like Thursday gets its act together and then starts heading towards a landfall on the Queensland coastline where a landfall on what looks to be Hamilton Island is expected um, as well 969 millibars that's probably yeah 965 millibar landfall that's as strong as Cyclone Debbie was when it made landfall on Hamilton Island and then into Early Beach you're probably looking at a high-end category 3 strength tropical cyclone and the strongest impact here since Cyclone Debbie of 2017 and probably the strongest impact on the Queensland coastline since Debbie or maybe Marcy of 2015. It would be a pretty touch and go situation, but nonetheless, it's definitely a once in a decade tropical cyclone that we're looking at here. And it's a concerning forecast to say the least. Um, the models have been pretty consistent with this powerful tropical cyclone wrapping up in the Coral Sea and heading towards Queensland. And that's what's got me worried because it's not often that you see models really hype up a system to this degree and then have this much confidence that this is how it's gonna play out. And the fact that it's impacting major metropolitan areas such as Townsville, Bowen, Airlie Beach, Mackay, and even down towards Brockhampton and Gladstone, you're looking at a very risky scenario for these locations that could receive cyclone conditions. So you'd be looking at significant wind damage and the amount of rainfall that all these cyclones bring ashore as well. And you could be looking at up to 750 millimeters in some locations. So a very wet cyclone as well could be expected, but it won't have anything on cyclone Jasper, that's for sure. And keep in mind, a category three strength tropical cyclone means wind gusts up to 200 kilometers an hour. So you're looking out for a very significant wind event to come ashore as well. 
Now we'll switch things up and take a look at the Access G3 model. We'll pull it back to Monday the 22nd, which is when the forecast suggests that this cyclone will develop into Australia's next named tropical cyclone. You can see those gale force winds really start to expand Monday evening and then into Tuesday morning when it starts its first phase of rapid intensification. And then it moves into the Coral Sea and becomes what looks to be a Category 3, maybe even a Category 4 strength tropical cyclone there briefly um, before it starts its stall on Wednesday and then into Thursday morning. Um, and yeah, up towards category four status. It's still got a little bit of motion, which is some good news for the tropical cyclone. It won't be sitting over the same area for 24 to 48 hours time, uh, which means that it will likely be able to make more of the fuel that it's gonna have available. And then it moves towards the Queensland coastline once again on Thursday. And basically the only difference in this forecast is the Axis G3 model is a little bit more bullish on the landfill intensity, up towards a definite strong category four strength cyclone here. The pressure in the high 940s, low 950 millibars, making landfall on Townsville. So what's that? Probably about 100 kilometers up the coast. Very consistent, mind you, that is for models about seven or eight days out. That's a very consistent forecast, but it's a little bit stronger and a little bit further to the north. Now, if I was to put my money on a landfall site, I would put it anywhere between Cardwell and sort of Mackay at this time. That's the most likely spot for a landfall at this point. However, the chances of a landfall extend right down towards Gladstone or Rockhampton and up towards Cairns. That's where we could be seeing a cyclone cross the coast in the next 10 days, which means cyclone conditions are possible up towards Cape Tribulation and right down towards, dare I say, Bundaberg or Harvey Bay. So um, there's a huge scope of uncertainty with where this storm will move through or where it's possible to move through on Queensland. And a lot will change um, in the forecast, that's for sure. However, again, it's becoming a little bit more obvious and a little bit more apparent to where the system will be crossing the coast. We won't get a complete understanding of what this cyclone is going to do in terms of its final landfall site or conditions that it will bring ashore until probably about Tuesday um, morning. That's when we're gonna really start to see the picture become a lot more clearer. And because it is such an uncertain forecast, it's definitely not gonna be until about Sunday until we know exactly when this tropical cyclone is going to be peaking and making landfall. Because the forecast is only certain until about Tuesday Tuesday the 23rd or Wednesday uh, the 24th. That's when we've got a really good idea of what's going to happen. But any time after that, it's very, very uncertain and it's very hard to make a, a good forecast on this cyclone. But I am doing my best. And if you want to see more, then please do consider subscribing. Now I'll take a look at the rainfall thread as well to close off this video. You can see some locations expecting up to five or 600 millimeters just outside of Townsville. And you'd think for a fast moving tropical cyclone that you'd probably be looking at about 400 millimeters worst case scenario for some locations. Well, this will have some good banding features, especially on the southern side of the system. So looking at places between, if this cyclone makes landfall on Townsville, looking at places between Townsville down towards Mackay, including Proserpine, Air and Bowen, you're probably looking at some places uh, that get under the right shower bands or the right thunderstorms that pick up up to 500 millimeters of rainfall. So a lot of rainfall is expected in the inflow bands of this cyclone, but its destructive core will likely be just this very brief, very wet period, maybe about six hours of some pretty intense rainfall, but that should be about it. Um, from from the oh, destructive core of this tropical cyclone. But if it does slow down a little bit and as it makes its turn, then we'll likely be seeing a little bit more rainfall around Torrance Creek and Charters Towers. But we're not looking out for anything over a thousand millimeters at this point. However, things can change. And there is a chance that some locations pick up at an incredible amount of rainfall, like 750 millimeters that push rivers beyond their moderate to major flooding alerts. And also as this cyclone tracks down the Queensland coastline towards Brisbane and the Gold Coast, there will be once again locations that pick up up to 500 millimeters. And yeah, just looking at that outside of Gold Coast, maybe around Coomera area, you'd be looking at places picking up up to four to 500 millimeters of rainfall. So a lot of rainfall is possible from this system as with all tropical cyclones, but it doesn't look like we're looking out for a historic cyclone situation. Um, in fact, it looks like it could be a little bit of a dumbed down version of Cyclone Debbie. Nonetheless though, a powerful tropical cyclone and one that everyone on the Queensland coastline should be watching very closely because it could impact any of you. Um, so yeah, make sure that you're being prepared for this tropical cyclone. Don't be too scared yet because it is just a forecast at this point and it is a forecast with a lot of uncertainty, but it's best off just being prepared and watching the forecast very closely because things can and will change. And I'll be bringing you the latest on this channel, so make sure you are subscribed uh, for more updates and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. But thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.